If I have to argue with one more person about this Javon Evans booking, I was so fucking mad. I was so fucking mad last week. And then this week they managed to make me even more angry. Mm. And then I got the quarter hours and I was downright fucking fuming. I almost had to go to the doctor. I was so mad. Do you realize that Javon Evans winning this opening battle royal did over 800,000 viewers? That seems high. And 90 minutes later, they pinned him. <laughs> and I have heard every fucking explanation. All I've heard is people in NXT defending this, and it's reminding me so much of this fucking Who Killed WCW. It's okay to fuck up and say, you know what? We fucked up. Let's try and fix it. But they fucked up last week, and this week they doubled down on it. And, yeah, I know the ratings are good for the show, but, like, it's this is the same shit that we saw Vince do over and over, and people hated it. And for reasons I can't explain... We're seeing the same exact shit in front of our face, and now I got everybody and their mother defending it to me. I've had every fucking excuse. You can't push Javon Evans. He's only 20. He just started. Blah, blah, blah. I can point out Hulk Hogan. I can point out uh, AJ Styles' IWGP title. I can point out Okada when he came back from excursion. I can point out, oh, he's only 20. He's only 20. How many times do I have to fucking hear he's only 20? You know, back in the day when people were 20, like they were main eventing, this new thing about how you can't main event, you got to put in your time and pay your dues and all this shit, it's bullshit. How the fuck do you think Randy Orton got the, the, the world championship at 21? The WWE, how did he get the WWE title at 21 if, like, you can't do that at 21? You're too young. Fuck me. There's literally no... Logical explanation for this bullshit trash booking of Javon Evans. And the more people try to defend it, the more angry I get. It pains me. It gives me no hope for the fucking future of this business. If people are spouting out this shit like whatever. God. He's 24? Well, fuck, he could have got One. it at 21. Yeah. Luthez got it at 21. Was that a fuck up? When Luthez got it at 21? Huh? God, all people ask for. It's funny. All people want is young talent, young guys. We just need some young guys. Every fucking young guy that comes up nowadays has to go through the same eight fucking year bullshit of doing jack shit because all older people are like, oh, you can't do it when you're that young. Bullshit. If a guy's over and he's fucking over and he's worked tons of end indies, and he's perfectly capable of going out there and having good matches the crowd goes fucking crazy for, you can fucking push the guy. God, this show was irritating. I'm going to backtrack a little bit here because it's funny. You, you have to backtrack to the fucking beginning. Well, I'm going to go back to the other show, actually. Because you, you mentioned Hulk Hogan's name, and he's someone I have thought of recently when thinking about Osprey has got this title match coming up against Swerve. And Hogan was a big star in Japan. Osprey was a big star in Japan. Hogan was a big star in other promotions. Osprey was a big star in other promotions. Hulk Hogan did not do a two-year-long chase of the Iron Sheik. No, he fucking showed yes. up, and a month later, he was the champion. It worked out fine. That's why I mentioned AJ. <laughs> yes. AJ won the IWGP title, I think, in his very first fucking match for New Japan. Okada was fucking playing Okato in TNA. He finally comes back from excursion. A month later, he's the IWGP heavyweight champion. You don't fucking need to wait. If, if it's a right guy, then do it. All right, and now people are trying to say, "Well, look at what it look at how look at how it worked out for Cody." Do you guys forget the reaction when Cody got beaten? Like everyone thought it was the stupidest decision ever, and it was the end of the world. And he went on, and he was like the top star and the top draw. He made more money than anybody. He won like, fuck God, I'm I'm done. So NXT, if you're somehow not aware, opened with a battle royal team, a top contender, including stars from other locker rooms. I believe this was a 25 man battle royal. Only two of those 25 men got introductions. One was the aforementioned Javon Evans. The other was, in his NXT debut, Joe Hendry. And they play his music. Uh, how long have we watched NXT? Is it, it has been a decade now. I don't know if you can count the number of ovations this loud I've heard on more, on, more on one hand. People went crazy for Joe Hendry. Crazy. Crazy. He got a chance to get a promo. And listen, 
I've been watching Joe Henry for a while on TNA, and I talked about him on uh, the Monday show, and talked about while he's doing great, there's holes in his game. This promo was awesome. This was an absolute A-plus home run promo. He was a star here. Uh, quick correction, Ethan Page also got an intro, but then was immediately attacked by Oral Mensa and was not in the Battle Royal. So, everyone's distracted by that, but then Joe turns, he's looking at everyone, he sees all, what would it be, 23 of them, says, come on, and they flock to him, with Frankie Kazarian, who pinned him on Impact last week, leading the charge, and they throw him out of the ring. I was fucking aghast. <laughs> I was absolutely aghast. And then people are like, well, you know, he's feuding with Kazarian. We'll have him throw fucking Kazarian out. Yes. What the fuck? And the thing is, it's not like they didn't know the guy was going to be over. Of course they knew. They, they would he wouldn't have gotten his own fucking entrance. Yeah. And they wouldn't have let him cut a promo if they didn't think he was going to be fucking over. And so the very, he's the first guy of 25 eliminated. You know how many geeks were in this battle royal? A few. And he was the fucking first guy out. Yes. Right from there, I was already irritated. I don't blame you. And it's they, they've been pushing him hard on NDNA for months. They've been teasing him here for weeks. And in, within, what, 72 hours, whatever it is, he, got, he gets pinned clean and tossed out like a geek in this battle royal. He was actually a total geek on that, that Impact show, too. So I don't know what's going on. But suddenly, it's like two separate companies have decided to punish him for getting himself over which is a very old-school WWE thing to do. I thought it was out of their system. Apparently not. Now, with that said, once that was done, this battle royal was awesome. And this was a very well-booked battle royal. It was not bad. It was not boring. No, it was great. There was a story behind virtually every elimination. Yes. It was, it was an excellent battle royal. So, we had uh, Spears tossing out Eddie Thorpe, because he's been targeting him lately. Uh, Damon Kemp is trying to save Dempsey, accidentally throws him out. And then Kazarian dumps the other two. No quarter catch crew geeks. Uh, let's see, there's some other stuff going on. Ridge, there's two guys fighting on the apron. Ridge Holland knocks them off, and everyone boos. And I asked, why are they booing? And Booker T asked, why are they booing? <laughs> I don't know. All I did was eliminate guys fairly. So, let's see here. Tony D is ringing wild. Uh, Nathan Frazier dumps him. That's to be followed up on. Eventually, we get down to a final four of Sean Spears, Javon Evans, Dragon Lee, and Frankie Kazarian. And it's long way to return to a WWE-based ring or associated ring. And then Spears immediately uh, turns on Kaz, and they're fighting, but... Uh, Everyone's fighting. Evans eliminates Kaz just with a mighty Irish whip into the corner. Yes. And Kazarian takes out the Sergeant Slaughter bump to the floor. I thought that was kind of a surprise. But it was okay because Dragon Lee and Javon Evans tore shit up. Whole buildings on their feet. It's completely insanely great. People can fucking watch that and tell me that Javon Evans is like too young and he's not ready. And like, what? Watch the fucking crowd. Watch the crowd the day he debuted. Watch the crowd in his match with Elia. Watch the crowd in his, his tag match with, with Trick. Watch the crowd here. But he's not ready. Not ready. So, uh, Dragon Lee tries to springboard something or other, but uh, Spears surfaces and shoves him off the ropes. And then Spears and Evans do some HBK tribute stuff, and finally Evans hits a rebound kick and throws him out. At the time... And it's kind of silly in hindsight to even talk about this, but at the time this happened, I could not fathom why it was not Frankie Kazarian, the last guy in there with Evans, because no one could possibly have thought Sean Spears would win this battle royal. It made no sense to me. It's Sean Spears. But Kazarian is an outsider. It's big news. At least at least there's a tease, because they've been doing uh, uh, trick versus outsiders. So he it was at least plausible that Kazarian as an outsider would win this battle royal and challenge trick. But there was no chance Sean Spears would win. Evans wins. Great battle royal. It ruled. Yeah, it ruled. I mean, when it was first over, I was initially angry because I was like, why the fuck did Sean Spears beat Javon Evans last week if Javon Evans is going to win this battle royal this week? The only way that that makes sense is if Javon was going to be trick for the title and Sean Spears would be Javon's first challenger. That ain't happening. So 
I at first I was like really mad at how stupid it was that they beat him. But then I thought, you know what? As I try not to sneeze here, mm -hmm. you know what? What's that, Brian? What do you got there? What's thought, on your mind? I thought maybe, maybe they figured out they made a fucking dumb mistake. So I'm not going to be mad about it. They they righted the ship. They gave this guy his big win. Now he's going to go on and face truth at the pay per view. Fine. I was I was fine at that point. At that point. At that point. Uh, yeah, I don't. Right now, as we're sitting here, I don't remember anything else good in the show and lots of bad stuff. So it's just uh, John Evans versus Ethan Page in the main event. It's fine. A typical NXT main event. It's nothing special. And uh, I'm watching this. And Ethan takes over. He grabs this young man. And he lifts him in the air for the ego's edge. And he throws, throws him forward. Slams him into the mat. And then he pinned him. <laughs> He's won the Battle Royal and is main eventing and still can't pin anyone. And not only that, and I've had people argue this with me, and I guess we'll find out for sure next week, but, you know, people are like, this wasn't for the number one contendership. And, well, if it wasn't, you better tell the fucking announcers, because they flat out said, Paige is the new number one contender. So, you know, for those of you trying to figure out what the hell's going on, you know, I, I guess that the idea is, well, I don't think they have faith in Trick and Javon having a singles match. Yeah. Which is fucking stupid, by the way, because I've seen... I've seen people way worse than these two have singles matches, and it's fine. You just choreograph it for a long time or whatever. But they they want Ethan in there to, like, help him through a match. And what the fuck are we doing here? Like, what are we doing? I mean, Javon and Trick don't need a third person to have a good match together. Well. Okay? They don't. Javon and yeah. Trick can do a main event. Yeah. And if they can't, then we got some problems here. Trick's your champion, okay? He should be able to have a main event with anybody. At least a competent match. And, you know, it's just it's irritating. I'm only going to clarify because the show ends. There's a big giant brawl, and it ends with a quadruple down with Sean Spears, Trick Williams, Ethan Page, and Javon Evans all down in the belt in the middle of the ring, which led me to believe it's going to be a four-way. It it could be a four way. Doesn't change any of your points. I was I heard a three way could be a four way. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. fact is, yeah. I mean, uh, what match do people want to see more? Trick uh, Williams versus Javon Evans, or this four way? I suspect the singles match. And the match is going to be the match going to be a bigger draw because Sean Spears is in it, Ethan Page is in it. The one on one match is the match that people want to see. And, you know, my, my final thing here, just watch the show and listen to the crowd. If you really want to, go back and watch all of Javon Zevin matches and listen to the crowd. And listen to how they go crazy for this guy. And then I want you to watch this show. Watch the reaction to him winning that, royal, uh, that battle royal. Listen to the reaction when he had his face off with Trick in the back. Listen to the crowd. And then go watch this main event and listen to the crowd when he got pinned. It's not good heat. They just, like, die. It's like, oh. And then, you know, after he's failed, watch the big comeback at the end where he hits two guys with a cutter because he gets to make the big comeback and hit the cutter on, on uh, whoever it was. Listen to the crowd. It's like, they cheer, but they don't fucking go nuts because their fucking guy lost again. This is... This is the same shit we saw for years. We want to get behind this guy, but you fucking keep beating him. And it sucks. It doesn't get guys over. And now we have to watch what we don't want to watch because they don't have faith in these two or whatever the story is. But I thought the show, like, the booking sucked. Just flat out sucked on this show. And whatever their excuse is, I don't care. I think it sucks. So anyway, yeah, I wrote on here that happy note. A bewildering show. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you Sunday. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. 
over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.